you all for coming out. New Year's Eve. Tomorrow will be 2024. <clears throat> this is our email address for comments, correspondence, and feedback. Our website also there for more information. Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder of Charya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Agana Dimananda Sya, Ganagana Salakya Chatsur in Milito, Yena Tajma, Sri Gilve Namaha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam, Stavi Tanya Rabutale, Sayam Rupakira Mayantati Swa Panadikam. So as we say goodbye to 2023 and are on the cusp of 2024, we're going to point out something that you may already know. It's easy to get stuck in life. A lot of people are going into the new year coasting on autopilot, expecting the same old, same old, same problem, same struggle, same income, same job, same level of joy. We'd like to light a fire under you tonight, hopefully to ignite something more on the inside because Krishna, our name for God, is a God of increase. He has new seasons of growth, new seasons of influence, new seasons of abundance out there in front of you. And for those who are going to stretch their faith in the upcoming year, keep God first place by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, or any other bona fide name of God, I predict that for you, it's going to be an exceptional year. A year of surprises, a year where Krishna elevates you and amazes you with his goodness, a year in which you accomplish your dreams, overcome obstacles, see breakthroughs in areas in which you might have struggled for decades. I'm predicting God-centered changes in the lives of the devotees of the Lord. Now, a good New Year's Eve prayer might sound something like this, Lord, please help me to use the 8,760 hours of this year in the wisest way that I can for you and for your glory. Give me enough happiness to make me sweet, enough trials to keep me strong, enough sorrow to keep me human, enough hope to keep me happy, enough failure to keep me humble, enough success to keep me eager, enough friends to give me comfort, enough wealth to meet my needs, enough enthusiasm to make me look forward to tomorrow and enough determination to make each day better than the day before. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. If you pray like this, get ready, fasten your seatbelt because Krishna is going to release his favor in your life in a new way. Why? Because you've sowed the seeds. Having sowed the seeds, now get ready for the harvest, expect God's favor. Let go of little tiny dreams, little prayers, little ambitions, little goals, because this is going to be an above and beyond year. Some of you have had difficulties, but can I tell you those winds which have been holding you back, they've shifted in the new year. They've changed direction. So instead of blowing against you and retarding your progress, they're going to come around 180 degrees and explosively catapult you forward. Instead of holding you back, they're going to thrust you forward. So tonight we're trying to speak victory into your future. Not just words to make you feel good, but healing words of life, power from the Almighty Lord. That's why when you hear them, something ignites on the inside. Prabhupada, our spiritual master back in the 60s, empowered his early followers to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. Once, sometime in 1968, he was spinning the globe of the world, saying, Brahmananda will go to Africa, Sudama to Japan, Bhagavan to Europe, Ridayananda to South America. <laughs> Some of these young people at the time would be challenged to have even tied their shoes what was Prabhupada doing? Calling out their greatness from the inside. Someone might have said, Prabhupada, this hippie, to open up Africa, 
this bohemian to preach in Europe, this one to go to Japan? What's your, if that's your plan e, A, what's your plan B? Well, Brahma didn't have a plan B. That was plan A, plan B, plan C. <laughs> so tonight, what we're doing is bearing witness to the eternal spirit and its unlimited capabilities which exist within each and every one of us. With the help of the Lord and in the middle of his plans for his life, your destiny is to rise higher. Your destiny is to live a life of victory. So you would do well to get into that spirit, rise up on this New Year's Eve and say, yes, this is for me. I'll take a big cup of that. 2024, it's going to be my year. I'm stepping into a new season. I'm stepping up to be the hero or heroine of faith that Krishna or God created me to be. I'm putting on a new attitude. I'm enlarging my vision. I'm going to go into this new year with a new fire. Krishna or God's favor is based on two things, obedience and timing. And when it's your season, you can't sit back and loiter. You have to recognize it and step into it. Good example is the baby lotus. Its wings are very small, too small to get lift up. And it's got these huge, huge legs all out of proportion to his body. The baby lotus, if he wanted to feel sorry for himself, he'd say, God, what have you done? You've given me legs which are almost too big to run with and wings which are too little to fly with. Did you make a mistake? Were you having a bad day? But one day, the baby locust hears the winds coming, rustling in the top of the trees, the leaves banging against each other, and something from inside of him tells him, now is your time. Now is your time to jump. The timing is critical. He's, he has to be sensitive. He has to recognize it. And at the right time, his powerful legs give him lift off. And once he gets lift off, his wings are perfectly adequate to keep him aloof. He can jump more than 200 times his own bodily legs. His legs and his small wings are all that he needs in order to soar. Unfortunately, some people have been down so long that they don't recognize when their time has come. They don't recognize the wind. They can't see opportunity when it knocks on the door. Chiru, I've been down for so long, struggling with this pandemic. I can't seem to get off the ground. I don't have the wingspan. I don't have the talent. I've made too many mistakes. They don't realize that if they would jump at the right time, catch those winds, they would go higher than they ever thought possible. Not by our power, but by the breath of the Supreme God. And when you recognize the breathing of God coming in your direction, that's when you'll catch the power of his wind beneath your wings. When we had the grand opening of the Spanish Fourth Temple in 2000, have him just sit down, just sit down. In 2001, Neela Shesachari, she was a scholar, she's passed away since then, but she was a teacher at Weber State University. She was one of our keynote speakers, and she spoke of the history of Indians in uh, Utah. Did you know that the first Indians came to Utah from Punjab in 1986, 1896, and they lived in the Cache Valley. There was a bit of uh, racism in those days, so they weren't able to marry any Western girls, so they married Mexicans, not being able to bring Indian wives over. Now their grandsons and great-grandsons are all doctors and lawyers and, you know, uh, members of Utah society. So she, there was actually a book called Asians in India, and she'd written the chapter called Asians in Utah, and she'd written the chapter called Indians in Utah, okay? So for a hundred years, there have been Indians in the state of Utah, but they had no place to worship. They had no temple they could call their own. So I saw, here's an opportunity. I had seen, by Bobby and I had seen, that we had the opportunity to open the first Indian-based Hindu temple in the state of Utah. So we struck while the iron was hot. We launched ourselves with our ungainly legs, 
and some or other raised the funds with our small wings and small ability, and this temple opened in 2001. And surely enough, the Ganesh Temple, second Hindu temple, opened just two years later in 2004. But if we would have waited to open this temple, we would have probably missed our time. After the Ganesh Temple, it would have been very, very difficult to get the momentum and the fundraising to raise this temple. So this temple existing in as unlikely a place as in the middle of Mormon Utah is an example of timing. <laughs> Krishna, God, is all-powerful. He creates and controls millions of universes. He can open doors that no man can shut. And if you get in the middle of what he wants you to do, difficult things become easy. It wasn't all that hard, as you might think, to open and build this temple. On the other hand, without a God-centered purpose in your life, it's said that easy things become very difficult. So we want that. We want to act in such a way that God is breathing in our direction. And we're encouraging everyone who's here tonight to recognize when your time comes. Don't miss your season. Don't go into another year expecting the same old, same old, same old. Don't waste another year feeling sorry for yourself, stuck in a rut, when you know you really are put here for the purpose of stretching and testing your faith. So our encouragement is, pitch your tent in the land of hope in 2024. Move out of the nothing ever happens to me subdivision out of the mediocrity township. Move out of those are my limits, Bill. Pack up and relocate to the land of more than enough, to the suburb of far and beyond favor, to the place where with Krishna or God's wind behind your wings, all things are possible. With this vision, you realize that what's in front of you is much greater than the things that are behind you. You may have had victories in the past, yet can I tell you on this New Year's Eve that the victories of the past are gonna pale in comparison to the victories that Krishna God has in your future. He's saying to you tonight, you ain't seen nothing yet. You think you're good, you think you're blessed, but he has mind-boggling things for your future. Difficult situations which have been going on for 20 years or more are going to turn around on a dime. By this time tomorrow, you could be out of debt. By this time tomorrow, your child could come home. By this time tomorrow, the doctors could pronounce you cured. You could meet the person of your dreams. By this time tomorrow, Krishna God has blessings with your name on them that he's kept ready for you. But the question is, are you going into 2024 with the readiness and the willingness to receive them? Are you expecting God's favor? Do you believe that 2024 is going to be your year? If you keep him first place, my assurance is that his blessings will chase you down. They will overtake you. You will be amazed and what Krishna has in store for you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vibhishan was the brother of the cannibalistic, despot, tyrant, Ravana. Unlike his brother, Vibhishan was a great devotee of Lord Ram. After his brother Ravana had kidnapped Ram's wife Sita, Vibhishan went into the public assembly and he told his brother to give Sita back. Ravan said to his brother, Bibishan, his devotee brother, he said, he said, because of your impertinence, he says, I want you to leave the palace. I disenfranchise you. I cut you off from our family. The only reason I don't kill you right on the spot is because you're my brother. So Bibishan laid it on the line to give his brother the proper advice. Don't mess with Lord Ram. So it, Disregarding this advice, Vibhishan knew that the winds of favor were not blowing in his brother's direction. They were blowing against his brother, Ravana. 
who had insulted Lord Ramachandra, kidnapped his wife and kept her captive in his city for a whole year. And because Ravana had offended Ram, got the winds blowing against him rather than before him, his kingdom, which was said to have been built of gold, was burned to the ground. His invincible army, which had defeated even the demigods, was defeated and he himself fell dead on the ground. Food for vultures and jackals. Everything Ravana had built up with great pain and effort and energy and suffering was annihilated because of his refusal to acknowledge Lord Ram. So Vibhishan knew that when you offend Lord Ram and Ram wants to kill you, no one can protect you. But when you honor Ram and Ram wants to protect you, nobody can kill you. Therefore, Bibishan was not at all surprised to see his brother lying dead on the battlefield. Bibishan was, however, stunned that because of his simple faith and standing up to his brother, at risk of his life, Ram handed over the whole kingdom to Vibhishan. Vibhishan had no idea of the tremendous favor that he'd stored up because of his faith in Ram. Ram is, among other things, the god of surprises. It wasn't fair that Ravana worked and slaved and fought and got the kingdom and then he got killed. It wasn't fair that Bibishan, just for a simple act of faith, got ascended, got handed over the kingdom. It wasn't fair, but here's, here's our takeaway today. Favor is not fair. You understand? Favor is not about fairness. Never was, never will be. God is a God of surprises. So don't ever rule out the unexpected in your life. When you're in the middle of what God wants you to do, don't ever rule out surprises. One good break, one phone call, one meeting with the right person, everything can change. Because you've been faithful, you've chanted the holy names of the Lord, Krishna can take you from the back to the front. Because of your faith, Krishna suddenly takes you from the bottom to the top. Because you've been chanting the holy names of the Lord, the Lord takes you from the pit to the palace to favor, influence, health, and abundance. Now, I don't know about you, but on the cusp of this new year, I'm feeling an excitement in my spirit. I think Krishna has things lined up in the next 12 months that are beyond the stretch of our imaginations. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. I'll tell you one little tidbit. I sent out a constant contact newsletter a few days ago to 20,000 people on our mailing list. I told them we have a 20% discount going until New Year's Eve uh, for all products, tickets, colors, admissions, meals, t-shirts, and the festive colors. Act right now before it expires. So we've still got, we've still got a few more hours to midnight, but in the last few days we sold $3,000 worth of tickets for the Festival of Colors, which not even gonna happen for another 90 days. So if that's a sign, it's gonna be a good year. It's gonna be an unbelievable year. Like I'm thinking 20,000 people. Prabhupada says here, <laughs> one should not be impatient in discharging devotional service, but should take instructions from the spiritual master and execute them with patience, depending on the mercy of Krishna and Guru. The successful execution of Krishna conscious activities requires both patience and confidence. What is meant by confidence? The devotee thinks Krishna will surely protect me and give me help in order to achieve success. If you've been faithful, even when it's taking longer than you thought, even when it's more difficult than you'd imagine. But you've been keeping a good attitude, being good to people, even when people haven't been good to you. You've been chanting, even in the midst of all kinds of upheavals in your life. I think you should start feeling excited now. 
Because Krishna, based on the seeds that you planted, has got mind-blowing things out in front of you. You may be planting ordinary, but Krishna is planting extraordinary. You may be thinking natural, but we serve a supernatural God. Some of you may be thinking, well, if I can just survive 2024, but Krishna is thinking, thrive, thrive, thrive. Get your hopes up. Be a person after God's own heart. One devotee declared, surely, not maybe, perhaps, could be, possibly. This is confidence. Confidence. I've served God and I have the confidence that because of the seeds that I've sowed, surely goodness and righteousness will follow me all the days of my life. In the Bhagavad Gita, Machita Sarvadurgani Mat Prasharam Tarishati Atachet Tamahankaram Na Sotashi Vyankshari. Krishna says to Arjuna, if you become conscious of me, by my grace you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life. If, however, you do not work in such God-centered consciousness, but act through false ego, then you will be lost. The choice is there on this New Year's Eve. If you want to make a New Year's resolution, let, let my steps be guided by the light of God's instructions from within my heart. Elsewhere in the Srimad Bhagavatam 11th Canto, it's written, There is no higher possible gain for embodied souls in this age than to surrender fully to the holy name of the Lord, putting all their hope and faith in the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This is a quote I ran across. I think you'll agree with me. It's very beautiful. I don't know who said it, but here it goes. Hope is the ability to hear the music of the future. Faith is the ability to dance to it today. And you can't have faith without hope. Fact is, the day that you quit being excited about your future, that's the day you stop living. Would you agree with me that too many people are breathing, but they're not alive? They're existing, but they're not living. This was once written on a tombstone. Here lies Zeke Carter. He died at 45, or he was buried at 75. But what happened? He stopped dreaming. He quit expecting. Maybe we can bring a few people back to life here this afternoon. In fact, you would not have seen the light of day this morning unless Krishna had great things in mind for you in your future. And it's true. People may have pushed you down. People may have discouraged you from your dreams, but they're still alive. And hopefully we can stir up some of those embers, embers tonight towards the great plan that Krishna has for your life. Two artists, brothers, Albert and Albrecht Dura. Sean's probably familiar with this. They both had artistic talent, but they had no money. So they drew straws to see which one would work in the mines and pay the tuition for the other brother to go to the prestigious nearby Nuremberg School of Art. Albrecht got the short, short straw and Albert went to the school for four years. He graduated and as they were toasting his success, Albert said to his brother, Albert, now I can get employment as an artist, maybe a traveling mural painter. <laughs> <laughs> and pay the tuition for you to go to school in your turn. And Albert said, look what the four years in the mines done to my hands. Yeah, the bones and every finger have been smashed at least once. And lately I've been suffering from arthritis so badly that in my right hand I can't even properly hold this Goblet to return your toast must much less make delicate lines on a canvas with a pen or a brush. No, brother, for me, it's too late. But that's not the end of the story. Albert was so moved by his brother's sacrifice that he asked him to pose in prayer for him. And then he drew this 
famous ink and pencil sketch entitled Praying Hands, parentheses, of my brother, using his brother as a model for that piece. That simple drawing, I think you'll agree with me, contains in itself the silent story of brotherly love, sacrifice, and generosity. It's also a reminder to us that God notes every act of sacrifice. He knows every time you took the high road. He's noted every time you've picked up your beads and chanted, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And by the way, we're going to have a golden opportunity to do a lot of chanting tomorrow on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. My Bobby will tell you more about it during the announcement period. Some of you might be thinking, it's over, it's too late, my best days are behind me. I have only to look forward to the rest of my life on the sidelines. But Krishna brought you here tonight to tell you, it's not too late. It wasn't too late for the brother who worked in the mines. Certainly not too late for you. You haven't made too many mistakes. It's not over until God says it's over. So do your part, stretch your faith, rekindle those dreams in 2024. And it's true. You can't make it happen. But when you believe, that activates God's breath behind your wings. That child you've been praying about, it's not going to be another 20 years. He's going to start making good decisions this year. That career which has been stuck, you've been passed over for promotion so many times. Promotion is coming this year. You're not going to have to suffer for that addiction for another 10 years. You're going to get clean this year. So let's start off by saying, thank you, Lord, that this year I will meet the person of my dreams. Thank you, Lord, that this year I'll see my health turn around. Thank you, Lord, that this year I'll write that book, compose that song, organize that festival. This year my business will take off. The greatest lie is that what's facing you is permanent. Things are never going to change. I'm too old. It's too late. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never meet the person of my dreams. If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. Those are lies. Because it hasn't happened to date doesn't mean that God's not on the throne. It doesn't mean that it's not stored up to you. And it doesn't mean that in the right time, in the right place, not a minute too early, not a minute too late, everything will fall into place. One quick story. 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the devotional incarnation of Krishna in West Bengal, Nabadwi, was starting the Sankirtan movement. He has encouraged his followers to go out in public with drums, cymbals, and glorify God. But they were under an extremely brutal Muslim rule at the time. The first day that his followers went out with drums, which were made of clay, the local Muslim magistrate came with a stick. He broke the drum and he said, this has to stop. If I see any of you coming out into the streets in the future chanting these Hindu names of God, you don't want to know what I'm going to do to you. It'll be October 7th all over again. Very, very serious threat. It looked like that was the end of the Sankirtan movement. It looked like it was over before it even started. But what happened? When the news came to Lord Chaitanya, he started the first nonviolent civil disobedience movement before Gandhi, before Martin Luther King, he organized a hundred thousand people after dark with torchlights and hundreds of drums and thousands of and they went in defiance of the Muslims order. They went all through the streets of Navadvip chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So terrified were the Kazi's bodyguards that they took off for the hills. And the Kazi went up to the second floor of his house and hid himself under his bed. The <laughs> Lord Chaitanya said, I mean you no harm. Please come down. Let's have a talk. 
to the very day that the Sankirtan movement started and seemed to have been nipped in the bud, killed in its infancy, that very evening, the Kazi told Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not only will I never oppose your Sankirtan movement, but all of my future generations, my sons, my grandsons, my great, they will all be favorable. And even to this day, that happened in eight in the 1500s, even to this day in Navadweep, the descendants of that same Muslim magistrate are extremely favorable to the Sankirtan movement. So what looked like it was the end was really the beginning. That very evening, the Kazi retracted his order and promised not only not to persecute, but he promised imperial protection to the Hare Krishna chanters for generations to come. But what do we learn? No opposition, no say, naysayer, no politician, no critic is bigger than the holy name of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna's devotional incarnation, predicted that the chanting of Hare Krishna would spread to every town and village in the world. One last story. Fast forward to Melbourne, Australia. Vaibhavi and I joined in Melbourne, oh, well, in Australia. And around 1971, the city council of Melbourne decided they were going to remove the Hare Krishnas from their city. So they invoked this dormant law that was a hundred years old. It had to do with singing in public and collecting donations. And they started citing us. Whenever we were out in public chanting or serving books, we'd get citations of court appearances. I personally had 65 citations. The total number of citations was somewhere around 1,500. Well, make a long story short, Fast forward from 1972 to 1985, the city of Melbourne celebrated its 150 years since its founding. They had a huge celebration with fireworks and a huge stage where a million people came. And at the prime time for those celebrations of the 150th year since the founding of Melbourne, 400 Hare Krishnas came on stage and chanted for a half an hour. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So it seems like your plans never gotten off the ground, nipped in the bud. The dream is too great. You don't have the connections. You don't have the funds. The opposition is too great. It's taking too long to come true then I have a suggestion for you. Believe that Krishna God can do anything. Don't wait until the dream comes true and then believe. No, you have to believe now. And then the dream will come through because it's the belief. It's the faith which causes God to go to work. Faith is the greatest power in the world why? Because it's the only thing that activates the power of the Almighty God in our lives. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Believe it and then see. And we're asking you today to get your hopes up. Start celebrating on this New Year's Eve what Krishna is about to do in partnership with his devotees. 2024 is earmarked as your year. So start walking like 2024 is your year. Start thinking like 2024 is your year. Start acting like 2024 is your year. Start dressing like 2024 is your year. Believe that 2024 is your year. Don't make excuses. Be a believer and not a doubter. Get up every morning and announce it by faith. Lord, I want to thank you that this year is my year. This year is going to surprise me. This year I'm going to see promises come to pass. This year things are shifting in my favor. If you will activate Krishna or God's power in this way, I believe you have 
ahead of you, a year of abundance, a year of joy, a year of health, a year of victory. I believe this New Year's weekend will be the prelude to an above and beyond future, an exceptional life this time around. And next life, you'll go back to home, back to God. If any of that sounds good to you, just raise your hands with me. Let's all say it together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you all for your kind attention. You're a great, great audience. So where's Namaritya? Do you want to lead your first kirtan in Spanish for Utah? All right, you're welcome to stand up and we'll have Arti and some chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Can I put this here? Go